Okay, by request, um, I had a request yesterday for someone talking about screening tenants. And I was going to do the number one do or number one don't, but then I'm thinking, well, there's two do's, there's three don'ts, and I'm like, forget it. We're just going to do simple, um, you know, best practices of screening tenants, how it works. So a, a lot of the laws changed recently in New York um, about what you can charge. And my number one tenant screening tool used to be charging two months security and the first month's rent. And I found that people that could put together three months, um, I almost never evicted them. Really, uh, it was a big deal. Uh, and you can't charge more than one month security now. So I don't even know uh, how to do what I uh, have, did before, but I think there is a way to charge some kind of other fee, a non-refundable fee that's not called security, a refundable fee that's not called security. But again, speak to your attorneys about it. But the, the most important parts of screening tenants is that there are a lot of questions, fair housing questions, you're not allowed to ask. People don't know this. You're not allowed to ask how many kids you have. Are you pregnant? Where are you from? All kinds of things you're not allowed to ask. Because if you turn that tenant down, um, it's going to be seen as a fair housing violation. So you got to find out what the fair housing laws are. You also have to have a very good a very good um, application and an application process. So I always charge a fee for the application and then I do a background check. Now, if anybody here wants a copy of my uh, tenant application, I can easily send them to you, just DM me. And if anybody wants a list of screening companies, I can give them to you. Most of them are not expensive, 20, 30 bucks, and I'll charge that fee to the tenant. Now in Long Island right now where I, where I operate, there is almost an insatiable demand for rentals. It is unbelievable and it's gotten stronger and stronger every year and rent prices have gone up. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but um, it's important to know that there, I, I buy a lot of houses from landlords who have had the same tenant for a long time. I just spoke to one yesterday, had somebody for 22 years charging him $1,100 for a house that he could easily charge over $2,000 for. That happens all the time. And this concept of, well, I don't want issues with my tenants, so I'm not going to charge market rent is crazy. Just to give you an example of what this guy told me, he he's charging $1,100 for a house that he could charge $2,200 for. The taxes are $5,000. So what is he really making on that property? $7,000 a year right now, where he could be making $15,000? If the house needs a new roof, he loses all his profit for the year. So it's important, uh, and this is really isn't screening, tenant screening, it's more a best practices about property management, but... Don't just keep somebody at, the, at ridiculously low rents because they're because they've been there for a while. Um, it, it you know people say I'm afraid the tenant's going to leave. It's good if the tenant leaves if you can charge a thousand dollars more in rent. So um, tenant screening. So the background checks that that you run we, we should be able to show um, if they have criminal record. That's important, and they might show if they have an eviction. But New York's not so great with uh, public data for evictions. But you want to ask on the application. Very important. The current landlord and the previous landlord. See, the problem is the current landlord, and I've been in this situation, if they want them out, they're going to tell you they're a good tenant just because they want them out. That happens all the time. So you want to find a previous landlord and see how they were. And you want to see if they paid on time, and you want to see if they give you, gave you a lot of problems. Because some tenants are just naturally problem givers. They find problems with everything. They complain. It, it's the truth. It happens. Um but again, my number one tenant screening tool was always to charge three months in total. And if there is a way to do that, I'm going to continue to do that. I just got to find out what the new laws are, new laws are whether I can. Obviously, can't do anything illegal um, ever. So uh, I'm not doing this as a do's and don'ts, but really for tenant screening, have a good application, do a background check. I'm putting fingers out here. Do a background check and um, charge the equivalent of three months rent, first month's rent, one month security, and then if they ever pay a broker, that's a third month. Um, if there's any kind of fee, refundable fee, deposit that you can put on that's not called security, if it's if it's legal, I, I would do that because I find that uh, people that can put three months together without giving you any trouble with it are usually going to be the best tenants. If, I have a rule, and this is when I, it was perfectly legal to charge two months security and one month's rent, that if the tenant said anything about that money, anything, I'm talking about if it's a $2,000 a month rent and they told me I have $5,999, but I'll give you $1 in a week. I found that if they said anything about that money, I had like a 100% increase in evicting those tenants eventually. I don't know what it was, but I, I this is what my, my experience has been. Anybody who gave me issues with coming up with the money was somebody, not anyone, but almost anyone who did that was someone I eventually evicted. So... 
If someone said that to me, I would just say, I'll get back to you. And I, I, and I called them back and said, I'm, I'm renting it to somebody else. I'm sorry. So um, again, the people who, can, who, can, who have ability to save, who can put money together, I find are the people who end up paying and who, find, who consider rent to be uh, an important part of their uh, monthly bill. Um, the people who give issues were, were almost always somebody that I had to evict eventually for different reasons, all kinds of different reasons. And I've evicted a lot of people. Um, you know, I don't, I don't buy, I don't, I don't own in New York City because evictions there take much longer. But in Nassau and Suffolk, they're not that bad, three, four months. Um, so again, if you want to avoid those issues, try and get three months up front if you can do it legally. Uh, do a good application, get get them to sign a very detailed application. You want as much information on them as possible, and you want, um, and you want to do a background check, which checks for criminal behavior. Previous evictions, sometimes you know, sometimes they were evicted in another state, and they'll show it. That's what you want to look at. Uh, I also do run a credit report, but I find that it's not a great indication of whether somebody's going to pay rent. Even people who have really crappy credit will still pay their rent. Um, but I do, I, I would use it if I'm comparing two different tenants. If someone had great credit and someone had terrible credit, I might take the person with better credit. It's, it, it is some indication. But I've had tons of tenants with terrible credit who. Um, who uh, were great tenants. And uh, I don't think there's a real strong correlation between your credit score and whether you're going to pay your rent. That might be a correlation between when you pay other bills, but people feel that they don't want to risk getting evicted, so they <coughs> most will pay the rent even if their credit's bad. I do check income. I do verify income. I want to see that they have uh, sufficient income to pay the rent. That's another thing you can do. Um, those are really my best practices for Tenant screening, I just have coughing it out, my eyes are red. Um, but that's what I have to say about tenant screening. So again, if anybody uh, has any questions or any requests for any of these Facebook Lives, let me know. Um, there are seven ways. Oh, if you like these, please click like, please share, comment. Again, any all comments get responded to. There's seven ways I can help you if you're looking to get started uh, flipping properties in New York. If you're watching on Facebook, it is above. And if you're watching on YouTube, it is below. Um, you can contact me with any questions. Or put a comment in, uh, and I will uh, do a recording by request. This one is by request. Thank you for watching.